Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we'll be checking out something called Yours Truly. Uh, this is a third person poetic sort of literary experience. I will be playing as a character uh, in pursuit of another character through a wintry landscape and it's a bit on the somber side. It focuses on themes of war and loss and it just is generally really really well presented. Very visually striking, beautiful, and tells a very meaningful emotional story in a very, very short-form manner. Uh, so I feel that it actually has a very huge place in the, uh, the Indie Impressions archive, as it were. Uh, so before we get started on this one, let's check out the settings very briefly. There's not a whole lot to see here. It's basically just uh, resolution settings. So nothing much to focus on here. Uh, there will be parts of this that I want to try not to completely deconstruct until afterward, just because I think it kind of diminishes the impact a little bit to know what's coming. But at the same time, it's maybe a little bit difficult not to come to some conclusions just based on what you're seeing in front of you. Uh, so let's jump into things, and I'll take it as we go. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row. Lieutenant Colonel John McRae. So our character wakes up in a frozen cave in a wasteland filled with what looks to be, you know, tomb grave markers of some kind. Uh, we're shivering, we're lonely, we're isolated, and looks like we're almost completely naked. Now I think it's important to focus on what this character looks like, what this character might represent. Uh, we've got what seems to be sort of an alien appearance with uh, an all-black body with maybe some slightly demonic horns. Uh, the left side of the face seems to be wearing a mask, uh, which I take to mean that half of the face is exposed, the other half is concealed uh, with an appearance of purity or some sort of innocence, uh, although it's maybe fake. So I don't want to get to too far away from the actual premise here, but let's walk ahead, and off in the distance you can see a figure through the hole in that rock. Uh, on sides we've got some barbed wire, which... Definitely brings a stark contrast to the sort of snowy appearance of everything. All of a sudden we go from very organic to uh, something man-made, something mechanical, uh, something sharp, something dangerous. And this figure standing over in the beam of light. Look how beautiful that is. We've got snow in every direction. We've got mountainous terrain going off into the distance. We've got fog. And we continue to shiver. The character has actually fallen off that cliff. And over there appears to be a bridge, but that bridge is actually blocked off by tombstones, so we can't actually get there. That's actually very significant in a, a roundabout sort of way that we'll probably talk about in a little bit. So our character approaches the ledge, and sees the other life form, and jumps. I take that to mean a signification of falling off of uh, a path that we can't get back onto, and off to the side, we've got this bridge that takes us back up, or could have taken us down, but it's blocked by graves. Now, as you'll see, these poppies are blooming off in the distance, following the path of the character that we're pursuing, and if we get too close to the poppies, they die. As they die, they cover our character in blood. You can see the poppies actually shiver in anticipation of our character getting closer and clench up. Now, the visual imagery here is incredible. We've got just this path of red going off into the distance up against the pure white snow. Towering landscape of all kinds of different runes and figures going off. It's just really striking to look at. And we can take our time at any point if we want to just look around and take in the scenery. Uh, but you kind of get urged on by, you know, the fact that we're you know, dying in the cold. 
we're basically naked out here in the cold, and, you know, the only path we've got to go on is to follow these poppies, and as we walk through them, they die, but we get to run faster. That essence coming from them is being absorbed by our character. As we get further up, it appears that there's some sort of a an image scrawled on this wall here. Now, I'm not entirely sure what to make of the image. It does appear to be that there's you know, a familial group here on one side, runes on the other side. I can't quite tell what that's supposed to be. It looks like maybe a, a horn demon presiding over the ruins, and, you know, the people are trying to escape. And then over here, this appears to be an altar of some kind, but then it's kind of scrawled out. I mean, I'm kind of curious to know, actually, what you might think that stands for. I have an idea based on the theme, but the idea came after I had figured out what exactly this was all about. It's also really interesting taking this in as an American, because I don't feel that I was necessarily... Uh, the audience that was intended here, because there's a, a very critical piece of information that I'm missing uh, that I ended up finding out later on, uh, that sort of ties the theme together. And I'm kind of curious uh, if other people that are, you know, from a similar location are getting the same theme, uh, whether or not this is coming through. You'll notice we've got a column here that's surrounded by barbed wire. Over here we've got another bunch of barbed wire blocking off this door frame. And this may very well be actually the uh, image that was showing the runes. We might be walking through the runes right now. We can take our time and look around them, but, you know, it looks like the results are going to be the same either way. The only way forward is to follow these poppies. Our character is almost fully coated in blood now, or, you know, symbolic blood, as it were. But we'll go on a little further. This absolutely looks like a tomb, and is very likely, you know, again, the image that we were just looking at here. Interesting to foreshadow something that right before you actually see it. So we come through a doorway, and there's fog obscuring our view for a moment. And what it appears to be is now we've actually got the option to walk a path that is actually through the poppies without actually necessarily touching them, but the edges are still there anyway and still get uh, burned by us. So it's actually becoming a path of inevitability, little by little. The further we go down this journey, the more likely it is that these poppies will die. And you see a banner. And all of that, uh, that, that signifies. And it looks like we've got more grave markers, but look at this striking image. Fields and fields of poppies, all the red against the pure white, off into the distance. Your character continues to shiver. And who or what is it that we're pursuing still? Oh, those poppies didn't die as I walked through them, actually. That's, uh, that's actually really interesting. I wonder if there's... Oh, you know what? It might have just been a bug. I thought maybe there was a certain way that I could walk through them that would cause them not to die. That would have been, like, a whole different message, actually. So it appears that we've got... A few areas, some patches of ground where the poppies haven't grown. I don't know if that's because these are supposed to be stone, or if they're actually uh, dug up dug up plots of land, and I think probably the latter is more likely. We've got more stones continuing down this hill that we can't actually traverse. So we'll just keep on walking through this metaphorical lake of blood. It's the only option at this point. And I see a figure over there on the ground. Now as I approach this last moment here, it's a very short experience. Um, I will end up cutting this off just in case there's a copyright issue with the music. So I'm going to jump back to the title screen after this, but I'm going to let this last scene play out uh, by itself without talking over it just because it's quite impactful.
Alright, so as you can see, very, very impactful moment there. Uh, so the figure we were pursuing throughout that game turned out to be something that when caught was dying, and we had to put it out of its misery, essentially. Uh, it was uh, hope for companionship that ended up being a moment of mercy, but, you know, at what expense? So the important bit that I wasn't getting right at first was that the poppy signifies Remembrance Day, which is a time of remembrance for troops that died in World War I. So as we were walking through those fields of poppies, you know, that was very much literally the idea that was being conveyed, that those were fields of blood, uh, blood that was shed in times of war. And we were, hopefully, the humanity that was chasing the end of that conflict but at the same time, there's a very easy way that you could see that in reverse, that we were we were following those fields of blood against our will. And at the end, there was no humanity left, and the whole thing came to a kind of a terminus. It's a surprising amount of impact that was shown in that small amount of imagery there. I think a lot of it has to do with the ambience that was created, the amount of metaphor that was built into every bit of that imagery, and just a constant being immersed in that feeling, you know, the cold winter, the, the feeling of loss, the feeling of chasing something, someone, just hoping for relief from it. And that's kind of where I think that these sorts of things really shine, these sorts of experiences are really very beautiful, and I don't think you can capture these sorts of experiences in any other way other than an interactive media like this. And this is what I look for in Indie Impressions, these sort of moments that we can actually take and turn into something really beautiful out of something really, really sad and really emotional. So I was very moved by yours truly. I think hopefully you were as well. I can imagine it would be rather difficult not to get something from this, especially once you know what this imagery signifies. And uh, when I was looking at it originally, I was seeing this as maybe uh, sort of a reversal in the way the roles even work, that maybe the fact that I was this demon chasing down my prey Maybe it was all malicious, maybe it was all malevolent. And uh, I was following this trail of blood because that was the prey that I was chasing. And it was just really interesting to see that I had it so backward in my head. And maybe that's partially the beauty that like is kind of inbuilt in an experience like this, that you can take things like this out of context and see so many different paths uh, through these sorts of stories. It's also a shame that I had to cut off the music at the end because it's very impactful. And uh, what I'm going to try to do in editing, and hopefully this comes out the way that I intend, is I should be able to at least show the credits uh, through without the music. But I highly recommend that you play this for yourself so you can get the full experience without someone talking over it. Although I did do my best to highlight uh, the moments that were necessary to see by themselves. So that was yours truly. Very recommended. Very highly recommended. I absolutely think everyone should see this. Uh, and the, the beauty of it too is that you can get something from this without even knowing what these metaphors stand for. Even if you just look at this as a feeling of personal loss, you know, everyone's got some hard time or some moment in their life that's really depressing, really sad, and I think that can be easily shown or easily felt through this interaction. You know, we're always chasing some goal, and it's so easy to substitute out those variables and see something, something human in this experience yourself, no matter what your life experience is or whatever your path may have been. So that's going to be it for today's episode. I hope it wasn't too somber. Uh, we'll be back with some more lighthearted stuff in the future, I'm sure. Uh, but thank you for watching, everyone. As always, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you leave a like on it. As always, I do new episodes of Indie Impressions every single day, so if you enjoyed this, consider subscribing to the channel. I'll have another one for you tomorrow. Thank you, everyone, for watching, as always. I hope you have a fantastic night. Talk to you all tomorrow.